we tend not to wonder too much what role made-up love stories have in our lives. Generally, we suppose they might just be entertainment. But that's wildly to underestimate how influential love stories can be. Arguably, part of the reason we find modern relationships so hard is that we've been exposed to extremely unhelpful stories that don't give us a correct map of love. What is it? I don't have the strength to stay away from you anymore. That leave us feeling in relationships that not only are we suffering, but that our suffering has no equivalent in the lives of other more or less sane people. We break up or feel ourselves cursed in significant part because we've been exposed to the wrong love stories. Oh, oh promise me you'll never fall in love with anybody else. Of course not, Now come on, let's talk about our cottage. Yes, well, we'll have a lovely cottage down in Devon. Devon, yes. In the archetypal romantic love story, the drama hinges almost entirely on how a couple get together, and it ends as soon as they do. All sorts of obstacles are placed in the way of love's birth, and the interest just lies in watching their steady overcoming. There might be misunderstandings, bad luck, prejudice, a war, a rival, or more poignantly, shyness. But in the end, after endless tribulations, the right people do eventually get into couples, and so the story must come to a close. But a wiser kind of love story would know that the real problem isn't finding a partner, it's tolerating them and being tolerated over time. It should appreciate that the start of relationships is not the high point that romantic culture assumes, it's merely the first step of a far longer, more ambivalent, and yet quietly far more heroic journey. Then there's the issue of work. In most love stories, the characters may have jobs, but on the whole, these have little impact on their psyches. Work goes on somewhere else. What one does for a living is not thought relevant to an understanding of love. Yet better, more realistic love stories should show us that work is in fact a huge part of life, with an overwhelming role in shaping our relationships. Did you file the motion for continuance? Peabody versus Henderson? It was sustained. Good. Did the judge consider your application for leniency, Rogers versus Gentile? He granted it. Great. It's the stresses of work that ends up generating a sizable share of the troubles that lovers are going to have with one another. Haven't you people got any work to do? Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Shadrach. I'm trying to run an up-to-date organisation here, you know. There's too much laxity. Far too much laxity. Then there's kids. In romantic love stories, children are incidental, sweet symbols of mutual love, or naughty in an endearing way. They rarely cry, take up little time, and are generally wise and cute. But ideally, our love stories would show us that relationships are fundamentally oriented towards the having and raising of children, and at the same time, that children place a couple under near unbearable strains. They almost always kill the passion that made them possible. Walt, where the hell are you? Right here. Why are you cursing it? Does it concern you that your daughter has just run away from home? That's a loaded question. Life moves from the sublime to the quotidian. There are toys in the living room, pieces of chicken under the table, and no time to talk. Everyone is always tired. This too is love. Love stories are so unhelpful to our actual love lives. We've learned to judge ourselves by the hopes and expectations fostered by the misleading medium of art. By its standards, our own relationships are almost all damaged and unsatisfactory. No wonder separation or divorce so often appear to be inevitable. They shouldn't be. We merely need to change what we watch and read so that we regularly take in stories that normalize our love troubles and show us an intelligent and helpful path through them. Mm -hmm.